So you want to share the PPT as well? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We, we are live. We are live. All right. So good uh, afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone. Today, I'm very honored to invite uh, our mate Sean Lee that, uh, from Detroit to give us a talk about portraits with energies. So I, I, I was literally talking to Sean about uh, 10 minutes ago. I said, if I want to have the portfolio, I probably need to work my ass off for another another 10 years or so he is um he is the founder and owner uh, uh, sorry the founder of rock that photography conference and trade show mm -hmm. he is uh the president of the multicultural association of professional photographers and Sean is also the industry speaker and director of the ted talk detroit mm -hmm. and uh welcome Sean. hi thank you man right, i right. appreciate it aries you rock <laughs> Yeah. So guys, ask lots of questions, as much as question as possible. Sean is going to um, have a lots, lots of very valuable slideshow to show us about uh, using, uh, mixing your uh, AD600, if I'm not making a mistake, right? And AD300 uh, with ambient light, mm -hmm. with outdoors. There are lots of energies, um, headshots shots with lots of sports and lots of vibrant color, which I enjoy a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of a big fan of uh, vibrant color myself, as you can see my images. Yeah. We actually share common interests of yellows, right? Yeah, because we were you were talking about my my um my my desert shot. I was like, oh, I love that. I love that yellow shots. Yeah, you know, the, the with the Bruce Lee sort of uh, sort of sort of vibe, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so can't wait to share with you guys all the uh all the fun lectures. Um, Sean, do you want to share the screen or do you want me to share the screen of the PPT? No, you, you go ahead and, and please share the presentation um, and we can certainly share. All right, cool. I'll, okay, sure. I will, um, I will share the screen now and... Um, cool. Application window. Share. Can you guys see it? I can see it. Yes. Yeah. All right. There we go. Um, Energy, yeah. Oh, and it's good. It translated well. Um, it translated well. That was one of the things I was worried about. Okay, very cool. Rock that. Um, so what do you want to do, man? You want to take it from here? Um, yeah. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Well, I am. Um, I'm a high energy person. And and hello from uh, from New Orleans. How you all doing? Um, rock that. And yes, we'll be back in New Orleans uh, soon. Rock that. Bring it back. Um, we need you all to come to Detroit for Rock That Conference, all right? Um, listen, guys, I am, I probably take, my images are probably as high energy as I am, right? And so I love, I absolutely love people. Aries, that's maybe that's something that you should know, um, is that I absolutely love people. Um, I love portrait photography because I think my strongest uh, skill set is the engaging of people. Although I think I'm a pretty decent photographer, um, I think my skill set in engaging people is, is strong, which is what makes, I think, my imagery strong. So um, starting out, you know, um, with this first shot that we did, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is an image that I absolutely uh, love. Slide number two. Um, and this kind of shows we were hand holding and this was actually a high school senior girl who uh, ran track. How you doing, Daniel? Um, Puerto Rico, how you doing? Hey, Aries, is it okay to say hello to people as they come in? You want me to just keep yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, go, go. Okay. By all. No, 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 by, by all the means. But go ahead. Okay. Say hello. Very cool. Yeah. So um, so this happened to be a high school senior girl who ran, who ran track. And we wanted to capture a, a really cool kind of shot. Um, of her to commemorate her running track, right? So she didn't have availability of the school um, and we didn't do the standard track setup shot that would be at the school on the on the track and field. And so um, me, her and her mom kind of got together and talked about what this could look like. We talked about colors. They went and got this track outfit and we talked about doing this really cool shot with, uh, with the Detroit kind of skyline um, in the background. How's everybody doing? And so that day, it happened to be raining, right? Um, and it was, for me, it was perfect, right? I loved it. 
uh, because it made for this really, really, really super dramatic shot um, with the sky. So she had on bright yellow and we had this dark grayish blue sky um, in the background. And we were able to kick down um, the ambient light of the shot, uh, as you can see in the the photograph where you can see the assistant holding the light and all of that stuff. And then we yeah, we go to this and you kind of see these are the shots, some of the shots that we captured, right? You can see it was a lot brighter than that. And I think what I did was I decreased, uh, I decreased by, by a couple of stops. Um, and then we put the flash on her and I couldn't tell you what we metered at. Um, as I know, I did a general metering um, for this shot and got it to where uh, I wanted it. We might have done a um, stop or two uh, brighter than um, or above, you know, um, standard or zero. Right. And we captured this shot. So you can see the actual sky is uh, not defined at all. It was very, very overcast. And if you look on the concrete, you can see that it was really wet. Right. Um, and the purpose of that is to kind of show that it was actually raining um, while we captured the shot. And so. Uh, what we did, we did some things in post and we got the final shot, which is the next slide. Um, which is yep, four. Just give me one second. Absolutely. Yep. Um, which is four. And I absolutely love this shot for her. Uh, I have kind of a commercial style, um, which I think works extremely well. Um, what we did was that is the actual sky. Um, What's going on, money? How you doing? Rock that. Um, that is the actual sky. So I didn't change the sky out or anything like that. All we did was contrast it um, a whole lot. Right. And that was actually how the sky looked um, in the shot. And I think that that gray just pops a heck of a lot against that yellow. Um, I shot low um, as to make the jump look extremely high. And we shot it as if it were a Nike, um, a Nike ad. Right. And so that was really, really fun. Um, that was really fun. I love doing this stuff, especially for families, especially for high school seniors who um, who don't expect photography like this for high school senior portraits. Right. And so for anybody who's maybe looking to do high energy, you don't necessarily go out and just shoot you to, to capture their heart and their mind um, to execute a vision communication. Right should be a great deal of communication um, with the client and preparation for uh, what type of shot you want to capture, how you want that to look so that you execute um, on site what you want to do. I think the other thing that I should mention is, is that I shoot fast, right? And so when you're dealing with clients, especially like high school seniors or moms or dads, everybody's on a schedule, right? And so we typically have to get a session done very fast, right? And so I don't have the luxury of being able to go on location um, with a bunch of assistants and set up uh, shop and set up lighting and and have access to location for hours on end to make sure we get the perfect right shot. And um, so we typically have to plan uh, really well so that we can get an optimal shot, get a really cool shot in a very short amount of time. Mm. So right. for uh, Sean, if I may ask, so for the re for the rest of the world who, because um, we do have a s sort of uh, high school senior sessions mm -hmm. in Australia, uh, I know a lot of Asian countries they don't have um, they don't have any uh, they don't have a culture of doing senior at all. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering what exactly is senior session like when children reach which certain age they do high school senior, and usually how long the session would uh, would take? Do you have um, uh, one assistant or no assistant at all, or how, how does it work? Just so, a lot of interest um, in general. So in the in the United States, there is, is United States is, is kind of weird. So in some sections of the United States, like the eastern, um, some of the yep. eastern uh, seaboard, there high school seniors is not a thing, right? But for most of the Midwest of uh, the United States, high school senior photography is sort of a way of life, right? Um, and so there is a great expectation that. Um, every 16, 17 year old, by the time they're junior year in high school, um, and I don't know what it is in Australia, right? But their junior, senior year in high school, typically the summer before um, their senior year, they will get their high school senior photos done that commemorate yeah. their, you know, of course, their high school high senior school. career, right? Or whatever. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, I'm a little different from everybody else. I do an hour session, right? And so I will consult with uh, the family for about 45 minutes. We'll do an in-studio consultation. And then I go out, yeah. man, and we will shoot for an hour, right? I do an hour okay. session. And so depending on um, how many locations, what the family spends, right? What they want will depend on whether I have mom grip, right? For me or dad grip for me, or whether we have yep. an assistant uh, grip for us um, in this one. And so in this particular shot, um, I had an assistant because I really wanted to capture this shot um, I really wanted okay. the light in a certain place. And so I, I wanted an assistant to do that and not mom. So, yeah, mm. rock that. So usually it's the mom or the dad is com coming up and help, right? Yeah. Well, we'll have them help um, on occasion. Typically, if it's one look, if it's one location and we want to do it real fast. And um, sometimes that's actually planned. Sometimes. Um, and, and this is what's really cool about this as a part of the seniors experience or high school career experience, their parents were really involved in their lives. And so having the parents be involved with their session is really important mm -hmm. to the family. Right. And so sometimes okay. we would do that. Um, and then sometimes we'll do it because we need mom to to hold the light. Right. And uh, we're not doing an assistant on this one. They didn't you know, they didn't necessarily want to pay the extra cost uh, of having a grip or that that particular new session. That makes and, sense. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, rock that. Oh, I'm seeing questions come up. Yeah. If you can address them, that'd be wonderful from Jacob. <laughs> Rock that. Jacob, uh, when blending action and flash, what is a good shutter speed um, to start at? I'm, uh, I, I'm assuming you're using a high speed sync. I don't think, to be honest with you, um, I'd have to go back and look at the metadata, Jacob. I don't think I use high, uh, high speed sync because it was so overcast that day. Um, there was no need to overpower the sun. Um, that day and i think for this shot i might have been at uh 250th of a second one 250th of a second i may have been for um for this shot uh in particular now even though it looks like she's moving really fast right typically when you do these actions there's not much uh energy involved um in it and so the pose looks uh, actionable and like it's it's a whole lot of stuff going on but really it was it was kind of slow um, going up and coming down and we just kind of captured her. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so no high speed sync on this one. And I would yeah. say two fiftieth of a second, but that also of course depends on your environment situation, lighting outside, ambient light, uh, you know, like anything in photography, it depends. Mm. I think, yeah, I think that makes sense because if we look at the building in the background, it's, it's, it's almost pitch black, right? Which means there's not yeah. much ambient lights going on there at all. The, yeah. uh, the girl is completely being captured by flash itself. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, one of 20, 250, that'll be enough because, yeah. yeah. But during the daytime, that's another story. If you mixing with the ambient, that's another story. And uh, because, you know, showing your light is powerful, enough it pretty much your exposure it's two slopes down as you mentioned it's probably just uh, you know killed all the ambient anyway yeah absolutely which is awesome um, stunning absolutely. shots thank you um and we use the uh we use the 600 um for this yep. sure uh, is that 600 bd or 600 pro just out of interest curiosity I, I, this was the uh this was the bm yeah uh out of curiosity would you um, you know, if they're your friends are trying to buy a 600, right? Mm -hmm. 600 watt slides, uh, for which, um, uh, for which friends you, you would recommend 600 pro and for which, you know, kind of photographer or style photography, you would recommend 600 BD. Um, I would recommend 600 for anybody that's probably going to be shooting, um, a lot of outdoor stuff, right? And so if you're doing, if you're doing a lot of, um, a lot of outdoor stuff. Maybe if you're looking to overpower the sun a lot, uh, and you're and you're shooting, um, maybe at noon. If if you need to make sure that you have enough light to uh, overpower anything or give you enough, that use a, use a 600 Pro, right? It is an amazing, amazing light. And to be honest with you, when you look at the stop differences between the 200, the 300, and the 600, right? You you, I mean. Both all actually all three of them are freaking awesome. Get all three lights. 
it's it's not like uh, it's yeah it's not like getting married with someone right you can get all of those yes yes so um i love i love my 600 um i absolutely love my 600 i thought that that day um i was going to have to overpower the sun right we shot a couple of uh different locations. We shot off the water. We shot in, um, I was planning on shooting in direct sun. It was not supposed to rain that day, right? So I just happened to have the 600. Any light would have done, uh, the 200 would have done great here. Um, the 300 would have done great here, 400, or of course, right? So, um, so rock that. Hi, Tremaine. Hey, Sherelle. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Pablo. Rock that. Um, this was pretty cool. This was, uh, this was shot with a, uh, I want to say 400. This was a 400 with a, with a 20 grid, I believe. Now this kid is also a senior and he had a club built in his basement, right? Oh my God. He had a club built in his basement. So what you're looking at, his name is Ellison, um, and you see the the sign on the uh, on the left of the photograph that says the L Club. Um, and so yeah. he's a high school senior with a club in his basement, speakers, fog machine, the whole nine. And so he wanted to commemorate. Um, he kind of wanted to commemorate that. And so this is sort of what we did. He likes to dance, loves to jump. And so, of course, I love uh, having people jump. So I thought it would be cool. I thought it would be cool to just capture him jumping, right? Um, and doing his thing with a spot, right? And so um, using that spot as a single light, he had all of these um, other lights that were so cool for the scene, right? The club, the all of these, um, all of these computerized sound ambient lights and strobes and spots that were kind of going everywhere. I didn't want to take away from that. I wanted to just put one um i wanted to put one light on him and uh and stop that light down and make it as dramatic as i possibly could um through the fog so we did a lot of different shots uh like that using the 400 um in the spot and i might have been once again 200 250th of one one two hundredth of one fiftieth of a second so that's only one lights right one light i yeah. love one light very especially is there any um yeah, is there any particular reason? I noticed um, uh, you are using um, standard reflector with a grid. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any reason you're using harsh light? I noticed that you are a big fan of you know lights on the harsher side. Is there any particular reason? Or yeah. well, so um, when creating action and contrast, right? Yeah, um, I like to use harsher light now. You know, we're talking about photos with energy, right? I have yeah. business clients and there are a lot of women, older women, right, that I photograph for headshots. Um, I'm using the softest light that I can find. I'm using the biggest uh, octaves and the biggest soft boxes and, and bringing them as close as I can to the subject um, and, using, um, and, and using all of those modifiers to make the light as soft as I possibly can. But when I have in shape, um high school seniors that are athletic um and i'm looking to create punch in my photographs i try and keep the the light as far away as i can i want to create that contrast and i like to use harsh light um i like those stark shadows hmm. right yeah because I, I i i i appreciate you because um you know while you got you know everybody's seeing on certain instagram you know there was swiping style of everybody's doing big softbox with soft lights on everybody yeah. regardless this person's age what sort of vibe it doesn't matter you just give soft 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 lights i mean i love soft lights yeah uh, i appreciate i appreciate the fact that uh, you use you know out use the harsh lights or you know soft light with different reflectors in the different scenarios to really um amplify the tonality of the the style you are going for right? yes absolutely yeah yes um the muscle definition right when you talk about muscle definition i mean you got to understand these are kids and they're in shape right they haven't they haven't eaten all of the sandwiches that i've eaten yet right <laughs> um, <laughs> and so you know when you have thin um 
um, harsher light is is much more forgiving and and much more accentuating. And so that is the thing that we certainly go for um, with, especially with this type of thing, right? So I love it. It, it brings pop. It brings punch. Um, I love strong highlights. I love deep dark shadows, right? Um, it 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 provides for me a stark separation um, and great punch and pop. So, um, and if you see in the next photo, same thing. Sure. Cool. All right. Um, it just, it tells a story, right? I love side lighting. Um, I don't know if you can tell, you know, yeah. uh, with that. Yeah. Very cool. Right. You'll see that. Yeah. You'll kind of repeat it I love bit. it. I love it because everybody was saying, you know, you should absolutely avoid split lights, you know, things like those. So I was like, you know, it depends really. It depends. Right. It really it works. Depend. In the scene, in a scene, it can work. And so here's the other thing, right? When we're talking about um, making money in the industry of photography, um, I like pop, right? And parents who aren't used to things popping or punching, when they see it, they love it. It's it, it provides a wow factor um, mm -hmm. in your images. It's not a it's not a subtle gradation of oh yeah, I love it. It's it's a oh my god, I really gotta have that, right? And so it drives it drives people to really purchase more to be honest with you when you have mm -hmm. a punch like that um it provides a wow factor same thing with the next um photo changes of outfits you can see the fog in the background um i love contrast and here is a, a, the, the purple lights and his hand is in front of his face and once again we are side lit and he's jumping um and it works it works um we also did it outside so if you look at the next photo yep. um you will actually see once again the uh, grid right um i love contrast i love highlight and and we brought the car out but just enough because he's the subject matter um and the center of attention right and so um we actually did a shot in his in his album where he wanted the light in the photograph he, he just he wanted the light in the photograph i was like wow okay so you can see it once again, one light off to the side. I love stark shadow. I love shadow falling off of feet. Um, right. And once again, without having time to set up a bunch of lights and avoid certain things and do a, bo a bunch of post-production, um, it's striking. Right. And so we can go mm -hmm. to the next shot. Yeah, it's it's all it's obvious, right? Because that person, right, you know, instantly becomes the brightest spots of the image, which mm -hmm. humans not eyes naturally would go to. Yeah. Yes. So I like to bring subject forward from um, from background. And so I will tend to um, expose skin to the brightest spot that I can without overexposing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I really like yeah. to do that. We wanted to the backdrop was the car. We wanted the car to look really big. So once again, we shot low and, you know, whatever's closest to the lens gets bigger. Right. And so we have his foot right in front. Uh, we brought the, the corner of the car forward, put the wheel right there and did a three quarter tilt of the wheel because we wanted it to look amazing. The kid loves his car. Um, and so we wanted to feature him with his car, with his gear on. Right. So that was really important to him and making him look really cool. Yeah. And we all love our cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I like to do, man, is that once I do a lighting setup, we get we get a bunch of different variants from that one lighting setup, right? So as opposed to especially when you're talking about high school seniors, when you when you uh, set up a lighting setup, you want to get variation so that it gives them uh, choices in uh, choosing albums and choosing prints, right? And so we can get many different types of photos from one lighting setup uh, that works. So we got them standing up, we got them kneeling down, we got them with the hood on. We got them with the hood off. We got them facing the light. We have them not facing the light. All of those types of things. Um, I think a person wants to do. What lens are you using for these picks? I'm going to say. Let me tell you one, Pablo. Let me tell you my favorite lens to use is my 24 to 70 uh, 2.8. I absolutely love it. It is my all-time favorite go-to, especially for high school seniors. One, I can go from portrait. Um, 
though it's probably not my best portrait lens, I can go from portrait to capturing the scene with a senior. And for high school senior photos, what's important is capturing the environment of the senior. It's one of the things that you want that, that helps to tell the story, right? And story tell. So I love that, the, the versatility of that uh, 24 to 72.8. Um, and it, is, it lives on my camera. It lives on my camera. Rock. Out of um, out of curiosity, um, I, my just in case the uh, the user might be interested, um, how would you determine the exposure? You know, are you doing menu? Are you doing um, how, are you how doing would I, heavy mode? Say that again. How would I what now? You know, how, how do you determine your exposure um, on your camera? Are you using menu? Are you using um, so? Sort of I, yeah, I am a manual guy, and I always have I always have a light meter on me yeah. right so i always i always use a light meter so now um i always have it with me so oftentimes i, I because i've done it so much i kind of know what i want to accomplish i know how i want it to look but i always set a base right um and for me even if i get away from that base what i'd love to start off with uh aries is i love one one twenty fifth of a second at f8 right yeah. i always go lowest possible iso um, which for me, I think my camera's optimized to ISO 100. Um, one one twenty fifth of a second at eight is is typically where I start for a portrait, right? And so I will always um, check out the scene. I will set uh, subject matter up. I will set my lighting up, and then I will always take a meter reading, right? And I'm always in manual, right? So I love manual. I I love it though. And don't get me wrong, uh, aperture priority. Um, has its place. Shutter priority has its place. Uh, I just I've always fallen in love with manual and my base. My all my go to is twenty four to seventy at one one twenty fifth of a second at f eight. <laughs> Rock that. Yeah. Very cool. Should I go, should I go next? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go next. Um, and this is a four hundred pro uh, using the eighty s sixty five. I absolutely love. I absolutely love that setup. I love that. I love the proprietary um, mount for the 300 and the 400, right? So mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. So we got a model um, and we went downtown Detroit and I just set up in an area where I saw some versatility, right? So we were in an area where there was open sun and then right next to us was a building that provided um, a great deal of shade, right? So I wanted to get some versatility out of the area without doing a whole heck of a lot of moving. Um, I like to, Aries, I like to shoot low, right? That's just, I don't know yep. why. Well, I do know why, right? I like I like images to look powerful, right? Um, I like for subject matter to loom over you. And especially when, um, when you got thin, nice thin, when you have models and you have thin subject matter, um, it works well, right? I don't do that with um, with average clients or doing headshots and things like that. Um, but when I'm shooting models, I love to shoot low and I love to shoot straight on, right? Um, so in this in this particular scene, I think I uh, I think I metered for the ambient light to be proper exposure for the buildings in the background. I just thought that those were were cool. I thought the repetitive nature of the uh, windows. Um, were really cool. She had on a tan jacket with a pop of uh, turquoise in the pants. Yeah. And so uh, once again, um, now we use the softbox on this, but she has a strong jawline, right? And so we did several shots of this, but I love the shadow, the definition of the shadow right at the jawline um, that brings that out. So we did stuff with her hair, um, the wind was blowing, and we just did several kinds of shots of this that I really um, absolutely love. Right. Yeah. Um, you also notice, you know, I, I love capturing. It's just fun for me capturing lens flares. Um, you know, I was taught coming up in, in learning photography, right, to always use your lens hood. And I absolutely do always use my lens hood and, you know, to avoid the lens flare. I was always taught yeah. to avoid the, the lens. Flare. You don't want unwanted light entering your aperture. Right. That that type of deal. Yeah. Um, but for me, this is kind of fun. Um, and so capturing her in movement, I think created a bit of energy, a bit of flow to the hair, um, made for some very cool kind of um, shots once again.
right? Shadow coming off, sun shadow, sh the sun casting shadow from um, from her made for some cool shots. Just a bit of edge lighting from um, from the sun. Uh, yeah, I also love the fact her outfit uh, her outfit actually fits the background, right? Because look at that building's uh, yes. sandstone color and the blues, you know, blue window reflecting the sky, and yeah. she almost mimicking the background, which is kind of bring the harmony in the color palette, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. nice, kind of cool. Um, rock yeah. that, the, but the, you know, and and I and maybe that's why I really love shooting low, especially outdoors, is I love capturing sky, right? The um the yellows, the blues, right? The 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 sunsets of sky against people, portraits. I just for me is amazing. Um it's amazing. Termaine, who's a friend of mine, said, Yes, you do. All right, rock that. Um Yeah. Is that how you capture sun flare? Just to take off the lens hood? Do you want to talk over? No, well, I always so because of habit, I keep my sun, I keep my hood on, um, but I still capture. Sun flare. So to capture sun flare, you literally just point your camera in the direction of the sun. Um, yeah, it's it's not that deep. And and you'll see probably in this last shot, in the last shot of this presentation, um, we did sun flare again on purpose, but it was really defined. And you literally let the sun shine into um, your aperture um, to capture sun flare, right, directly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. now if you're not trying to have sun flare in your, uh, in your aperture, certainly put your lens hood on, um, and don't yeah. point. <laughs> I, I think it's almost like a, like, like, uh, like spicy, like spicy food, right? The people, mm -hmm. lots of people absolutely can take it and people who loves it really loves it. <laughs> For me, I love sun flare. It just gives you a sense of reality, right? The light mm -hmm. shining in your eyes, bring you to the present moment. And in lots of movies, to be honest, we, we see lots of sun flares there too. I guess human eyes just naturally enjoys. Mm -hmm. right? It's almost yes. like the kind of back leads give an angel, angelic sort of feeling. Um, there is a question from Philip Lewis. Uh -huh. His question is, uh, is there an adapter for Bowen mount to um, for the 8300 Pro or 400 Pro, which is Godox mount? Um, mm. Do you want to answer that question, or do you want me to? No, answer I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to defer to you, Aries, for okay, uh, sure that one. Sure. Uh, so, Philip, how, uh, how are you, mate? Um, so basically, there is something called S2 type bracket, S2 type bracket, which uh, you can mount the lights in, and it helps you to adapt um, to the uh, to the 300. Uh, from the 300 Pro or 400 Pro to the Bowen mount, so you can use all your existing, uh, existing uh, sort of Bowen mounts, sort of uh, sort of modifiers. And also, you have an advant uh, uh, additional advantage because the S2 type bracket is really strong. It actually holds really well against the outdoor uh, scenarios like strong winds over 35 kilometers. Um, so check it out. Check it out on the BNH or Adorama or, you know, or at your local dealers. Um, yeah. And um, and I just remembered, Aries, yeah. the, the 400 sure. actually comes with a bracket that you can actually mount on the actual light. That is a Bowens. Um, oh. It's a Bowens. It, it actually comes with an adapter that you put on the front. You can put on the front of the 400 and screw down. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to do that each and every time when you switch between the 65 and the yeah. 85 light modifier to a Bowen's mount, but it actually comes with it. So you get well served from that S2 bracket and the, uh, for the 300 and the 400 light. Yeah, so you have a choice, right? You can spend a bit more time if you want to just keep it that way. Keep, yeah. you probably, when you, why you still screw that on, uh, you, you probably just want to keep the adapter there for a while. Mm -hmm. And right. for S2 type, you can keep on switching anytime you want. So it depends on you, you have choices. Right, Philip. Yeah. All right. Rock that. Um, Should we move to the ne next page, or yeah, let's, let's talk about? Yeah, this? let's move on to the next next one. Sure. Similar shot. Um, yeah. And so here we are um, with another senior. Had a very very cool style. She had this um, afro. I don't know if you know about afros, area Aries. You, you you know what I mean. So she rocked the afro, right? Big hairstyle, uh, <laughs> um, and we really wanted to capture that. Right. We really wanted to show 
um, what that meant and show that style and really do some dramatic stuff. Once again, an in shape high school senior, um, downtown Detroit, right? And so we use the uh, we use the 65W um, for this, and and this was the four. Once again, the 400 um, light during the day, right? And so um, we metered, um, and so. And so we did a couple of different shots in in similar area, right? Same area downtown. We used her stuff, uh, her jacket that she created, and then we we went to a Your Voice Matters. And what was cool about this shoot, Aries, is that you know we just went through an election um, um, here in Detroit. And what I love about young people here is that they are really, really involved in wanting to change uh, society for themselves. Right. And so she wasn't old enough to vote yet, but she was very passionate about um, people getting out and voting. And so we wanted to highlight that and kind of show that. So um, go to the um, to the next slide. OK, sure. So uh, I think Johnson twice, yeah, is asking the question about how high is your light and what modifier you use. Uh, the modifier was the. Um, the 65 w for the uh for the 300 or the 400 and how high it was it's it's up it's up and off to the uh the, the left hand side 45 degree angle right i couldn't tell you how high it was she probably has to be about maybe five feet something five foot five um so maybe that is a foot or two uh above her uh once again not really close because of course the closer the light the softer the light the farther the way it is the harsher Right. And so I love contrast. Um, uh, I love highlights and I love stark shadows. And so we kept it just a little bit of distance away um, to make sure that we captured that. I really wanted to highlight the hair. I, this if anything was going to be a dramatic shot, it was going to be this. Right. So 45 yeah. degree angle. Um, of course, you know, you're taught that 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 contains shadows or take shadows down lower um, so that they fall on the ground or below your subject matter behind them. Right. So okay. that is where we are. There are times when I'll shoot directly in the face. Um, so rock that. So uh, just you guys know that with uh, AD65W, it's a uh, collapsible softbox. Yeah. Uh, it comes with multiple interior. You, you can use it as a beauty dish as well. I think Johnson was saying on the previous shots, he's probably referring to this one. OK. Uh, what modifier do we use? I think it's the same, right? Same one. Is that the same? It's same. the same one. Yeah. Yeah, my Johnson, it's the same modifier, exactly the same modifier. Did you use as a softbox with a diffusion diffusion interior or use an as a beauty dish with a reflective? Uh, there was diffusion on the interior, right? Okay. So, so diffusion. Different. All right, as a softbox. Yes. Um, and and the reason that I the reason that I did that, I didn't want I wanted one light set up to to be able to go to both areas, right? Mm -hmm. So shadow. Yep. and out in the um, sunlight. I didn't want to go switching. Yep. So we opted to just stay there and um, we could create contrast enough with that, with the lighting that was the ambient lighting that was outside in the distance of the, uh, the modifier from the subject. Yeah, exactly. Great. Thanks. Rock that. Okay. Um, so here we are. We did a couple of uh, different locations. These locations were, were right across from each other, right? Um, and so you can see um, actual light, what was there, and then we can see creating the drama by uh, stopping down um, and exposing for uh, the skin in the front, right? So once we once we got to where we were, I did a couple of different types of shots. And so with the, um, you see where the, how the photo looked or how bright it was outside on the left, um, you see what we ended up with on the right. And then if you go down to the next shot, um, Aries, the same, yep, sure. the exact same setup, right? Oh, nice. And, and the exact home. same setup and we have her posing her hair. And once again, I am probably a little lower than eye level, just a little yeah. lower. And to be honest with you, I like to shoot low, but the reason I did that is because we had some people in the scene that would not move. Right. So they were down. They were down the street. They would not move. And so what I did was I lowered so that I could raise above their heads just a little bit. Uh, it works. It yeah, works perfectly. It works. Look at the highlights on her chain. I, I quite enjoy the, the lights falling off. Yes. Thank you. Rock that. Yeah. Rock that. 
Very cool. Um, just out of just out of curiosity, um, uh, you used the harsh lights with great right on the previous shots with uh, uh, with that gen young gentleman's uh, personal pub in his basement, mm -hmm. and well, in these shots you used the softbox. I did. Is there any particular reason? So, um, so. And, and here we go. One, a lot of it has to do with uh, logistics, right? A lot of it has to do with logistics. And so with the, with the, uh, the gentleman, very specifically, we set up that shot. I thought through it. So logistics, I'm going to photograph this young girl um, later with her mom, right? And so because we're walking around downtown, right, I'm not carrying a whole bunch of gear um, and we don't have, I don't have a grip with me. And so one light is the light that I'm using for everything, right? And okay. so we make it happen um, with that one light. The other thing, the other part of that is that she is um, she is a, a woman, right? A young lady. And so we, while we, we want harsh shadows, I don't want them as harsh as I do on a young man, right? I think that men are defined by texture um, and defined by bone structure. And I like to highlight that. I still want a young lady to look like a young lady, um, even if they're in shape and skinny and all of that stuff. I still want, um, I still want there to be gradation in, um, in highlights to, you know, shadows. I want that to be a bit softer um, and all of that. So it works doubly that way. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael South is asking, did, did you use um, high speed sync? No high speed sync on I this. I think we discussed about it, did we? Yes, we discussed okay. it earlier with the uh, with the yellow jumpsuit uh, because it was way overcast that day. Yeah, so, we Mike, we were at the end of the day. Um, we were at the end of the day. The sun was fading fast. There was no need for high speed sync. There was no need to overpower the sun. Um, yeah. we, we did that just fine. And to be honest with you, I think I was at um, where I love that one, one 25th of a second at F eight or whatever, five, six or whatever yeah. I was at. And, you know, the, that light is able to, of course, give you more than what, um, I think that's great yeah. because, you know, maybe while everybody's doing, I don't know, hamburgers, you just set up ice cream, right? Yeah. It's dif differentiate from the, from the others. That's uh, that's what makes the world more, more fun. Isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rock that. Very cool. How did you get a vertical line so straight and parallel? Did you use tilt and shift lens or tweak in Photoshop? So, um, no, I did. No, I don't use tilt and shift lenses. I'll use if we're doing some type of architecture um, shot or interior shots and things like that for uh, for different clients. But but with portraiture, I never use a tilt shift lens. What I try to do is, is I know when I have lines, I try to keep them as straight as possible in camera. Of course, when you are wided out, uh, because all lenses cause distortion, right? There will be some distortion. And so taking them, there's this beautiful, beautiful, um, algorithm in Lightroom that allows you to straighten your photos. They actually, uh, look at the lines in your photographs and will straighten them as much as possible. You got to be careful with that because it will actually skew um your subject matter right but uh mm -hmm. the the lines were really close enough to the subject matter where we could keep it straight so we didn't do much fixing in that particular photograph but there are some where we go into uh lightroom and um and use that straighten algorithm mm. do you want to talk about those three shots um sh yes yeah. so when we were on the roof like i told you i love sky she was actually standing up on um, a big brick, a big concrete structure. Um, and I just thought that this was a really cool shot where she pulled her hair back. Uh, and we once again shot this one up high and we just highlight, we did a highlight on the face. Um, and as you can see, the sun was, um, sun was, was like setting, right? So um, really, really cool. Just a really, really cool kind of uh, shot and highlighting the different parts of the hair. Um, we found another concrete structure with the Your Voice Matters um that shirt that she had on and wanted her looking off into the distance type of deal so we had this light really high once again same light the 30 um the 65 i'm sorry w with the 400 
um, light. I love the shadow falling off um, from the back, right? It brings, you got shadow um, in the back and you have highlights in the front, but it brings attention right to the face, down to the center of the uh, of the body, right? And uh, her hair absorbs a lot of that light, softens the shadow behind her, right? So uh, really cool. And then the, the first lighting setup that we had is that last shot on the right. Um, Right. Once again. So, cool. yes. And let's go to the so next. What Say again. Uh, are we, so uh, here's a question for our buddy, Michael. He says, what focal lengths do you prefer for portraits? What focal length do you prefer for portraits? I prefer all focal lengths, Mike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at your pictures. I was struggling to figure out. <laughs> I prefer um all focal lengths I, I i have to tell you when i once i get in camera i love let me tell you i love like straight 85 but i don't get i don't get versatility out of straight 85 right so i love it for portraits i love my 70 to 200 um for portraits and honestly i love being zoomed all the way in close to 200 for yeah. um for portraits but when capturing and what we've seen so far are seniors when capturing high school seniors um and capturing their portraits, I love to be wided out probably the most. So you'll see me hover anywhere between 24 um, and 30 for like have, 24 to, to 30 somewhere. Yeah. So the, and that's capturing the scene. So you're understanding that's capturing the senior within the scene. Um, and then I will do a shot like this where I will zoom in. And what I love to do. So I have this signature kind of style where I do uh, depth of field portraits. So I'll take my focus point and I'll move it in between um, the hands to the face, right? And do some really cool kind of shots um, with that. And you'll see some of that later in some, um, in some photos that are in, but we wanted, we wanted this Angela Davis style type of photo and um, um, from the seventies because she had this Afro. And so we wanted her to look really serious and we had her put her her fist out. And it was actually kind of funny because she didn't really know how to do that and what the fist would look like. She had her thumb sticking out. Right. So um, we had, we put her fist out. We put the focus point right on her fist and we kept the light up high. I wanted the shadow to be defined up underneath the knuckles um, of yep. the fist. I did not want to highlight the uh, the fingers up underneath um, those knuckles and so it created some drama and you can see her face is slightly out of focus which brings the fist um in focus and makes the fist a subject matter thank you all right let's move on to the next page yes yep and once again another um angela davis type photo i also love doing either right or left hand justified photos i i i just it's something about you know, um, rule of thirds, um, look mm -hmm. things. And so we have downtown Detroit, we have this track called the people mover. It's an overhead train. Um, and I just like that leading in and, and working as sort of a leading line into the gate and the gate leading into her, um, mm -hmm. and the shirt that she had on and she loves the brand Michael Kors and the shirt that she had on was a Michael Kors, your voice matters shirt. And so this is how we decided to highlight, um, that shirt in black with uh, the sun fading uh, outside. I totally makes sense. All right. So um, for this, we use big light and I use no modifiers on the inside. Okay. Uh, so this was this was a, the 600 Pro, I believe we used for this yep. 600 or the 400 and we use the 120 um l modifier so i had just gotten this modifier and i wanted to play with it um and so we had a model in the studio and so i wanted to have some fun uh with some energy so the first shot that you saw was her kind of whipping her hair um you don't see the full shot the the one before they actually had the uh the lights the lights that we used oh, sorry. Yep. yes right yep. So I wanted to highlight sort of the makeup and, and the hair coming. I just love the wispiness of the hair um, coming through and coming over it. And I think we did this at, this might have been F-16, uh, F-16 light. And um, 
I love the the separation that what I have the stand that I use and I put a mirror um, right on that stand and tilted it down. And I love the separation that it causes. It also puts a uh, also puts a, uh, a highlight in the eyes um, from up underneath. Right. And so I think you can see that from the next photo. Yeah. Is there a particular reason you didn't use any uh, diffusion? Um, I, 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 I actually started. I actually started with diffusion, and it was too yep. soft. It was too soft. Uh, so I started with both diffusers in, um, and then I took the outer, the outer baffle off, and it was still too soft for me. Um, for such a big light source, right, and as close as it was to her, it was still too soft um, for me. So typically, you know, we would use a, a beauty dish, but. And have Godox beauty dish. It had not had it had not arrived yet, right? So I was like, let me try this. I want to see how this works. And this was fun, right? So um, this is kind of what we captured using using that, mm. right? Um, we did a very kind of monotone makeup, um, and so I really wanted to highlight the makeup, um, the depth of in, in and around the eyes and the lips. Um, and we use the mirror to uh, kind of highlight the eyes, uh, add that highlight underneath in the eye and separate the jawline. And it was the same thing for the next. Uh, yep. For the next photo. With the hair up and um, so very clean. My style of beauty type lighting. This is a. Uh, bit of butterfly right um so yeah and so the next one we changed it up and so you know how i love my grid um and so we did a fashion thing we kept we her we kept it to the back we kept it to the background and i decided i was not going to light the background I, however the light fell um it mm -hmm. fell and we did um i did a couple of these but the one that we're showing is the one that is up high um, aim down low. I love the the separation and the shadow on the neck uh, from mm -hmm. her face. And so we use that light just on her face, I think with a 20 stop grid again. Um, loved it. We metered the light. I can't I, I, I don't remember what I metered it at. It might have been at um, F11, maybe. F11, maybe um, somewhere around there. Right. Uh, maybe a little bit more than F11. Um, and got the face to where I want it. And then um, with the 65 and the 400, we uh, did the mix at midsection, right? I love the I love the shadow coming off the back onto the uh, backdrop and the gradation from um, light falling off from the uh, 400 on the midsection. So this was a uh, this was a three quarter shot. And of course, we, she can pull that off because she is uh, she's a model and she's in shape. And once again, uh, I love the tone. I love the shadow separating uh, collarbone from the neck. Um, all of the shadows in the shirt, right? I think adds to uh, the composition of the shot. Yep. So there is a question says, uh, does Godox sell big reflective uh, parabolic softbox? Not that. Uh, Personally, not that I'm, I'm, I am aware of, but uh, we do have a professional range of uh, reflective umbrella, if that helps. Uh, but stay tuned. Um, they publish new products um, every month, if not every single week. So stay tuned. Um, so, they yeah, have some. The, biggest, the biggest one is the six foot, is the seven foot, right? Um, the 72 inch umbrella. Uh, is what they sell. And then uh, Godox does have a... They do have a Nocta that is a 55 inch, right? Which is the biggest that I've seen. So you can search Amazon or, or wherever, do a search for Godox. They do have a 47 and a 55 inch. Um, Robert says, I love this speculative of light when shooting with only silver lining with no diffusion. Yes, um, I agree. Rock that, Rob. What lens on these shots? Um, I want to say that this is the. You know that the twenty four to seventy lives on my lens, lives on my camera. But I want to say that this is the 
70 to 200. And I might be at 70 on this. I'd have to check the metadata. Hmm. I do want to say, I do want to say that maybe I stuck with the same lens um, for the beauty shots, which was a 70 to 200. Rock that. Are you shooting tethered in studio? Yes. Yes. I love shooting tethered in studio. Um, yep. And part of the reason I do, I used to, when I started out shooting tethered in studio, um, people told me that you do it for composition and all of that stuff. But what I found is when I shoot tethered in studio, when clients can instantly see um, the quality of the product that they're getting, they tend to spend more money. Yeah, especially pushing the dynamic range with uh, shadow details or light details, right? Highlight yeah. details. You want to yeah. see if you can recover them and how much yeah. fill lights you need to. Yeah. You can sort of apply your preset as well. So it's it comes actually quite handy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Michael has a question about the modifier's weight uh, problem. Does the modifier's weight cause problems with light position um, and drift? <laughs> Yeah, it can, Mike, if your uh, if your uh, if your scissor system right is uh, is not the strongest, right? <laughs> yeah. So you use stuff like clamps and and all of that stuff to hold it down and to keep it from moving in place and all of that stuff. So it can, right? I mean, the, the modifier that we used before was a pretty big one. That was the one twenty L, and I think the one twenty L. What is that? Is that pretty close to? Is that 50 inch, 55? 120 is 120 centimeters. I'm sorry, I, I have to Google. Let me Google. Yeah. Yes. So, so 120 cm in inches, that would be uh, 47, 47.2 inches. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it, it can be heavy. So with heavy modifiers, I always use S2 type brackets. So as I said, it can help you to hold the lights. It can help you actually hold all the 8300, 400. If I don't make a mistake, it can hold 8600 too. Or V, uh, V1, 8200. It can hold all sorts of lights. Um, that it's, it's pretty strong. So it can sort of resolve your drifting problem if you do have any. Yeah. Right there. Very cool. Yep. Should I move down to the next? Sure. Yep. So this was a fun one. Um, <laughs> this was a fun one. So this kid is senior year wanted to, uh, he, he was a chef. He was in training for chef and that, and that's his instructor. And so, um, we did a shot where, uh, the instructor was down his throat while he was cutting, uh, vegetables, right. And mushrooms and things yeah. like that. And so we had him sort of being the, uh, the the what's 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 the name of uh, Gordon Ramsay? We had him sort of like being Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay. throw while he was cutting the vegetables, and he was like he was like cut them right, right, like cut the vegetables right, and so they could not stop laughing, right? They they just they could not stop laughing. This was one light source um, where we wanted to capture it, and because there was so much movement. Um, I wanted to use one light source. We didn't keep them yeah. um, stationary in a position. We wanted to just capture yeah. it, um, flood the scene kind of with light. And so this was this was fun capturing that energy. Um, this was the 600, I believe, yeah. right? And and so once again, I love to take the 600 with me, especially if I'm going to be in arenas where I'm not sure what environment I'm going to be shooting in next. I want the most possible light if I need, if I have to need it. I know we need it that much light, but um, we could certainly adjust. And so, um, and so that's what we did. The 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 next one um, is the same is the same story, right? And so yeah. the kid had the hardest time kind of acting <laughs> out and so it was just try like, not try yeah. not to laugh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yes gosh. yes right and so i think i think this photo um goes to when you're talking about um putting energy in your photos or or storytelling i should say i should use yeah. the term, um storytelling you really want to yeah. convey to the client what you need them to do right so you should have a vision yeah before you approach the scene. Um, 
this this shoot was about his senior photos in the commercial kitchen but we asked his instructor to be there so that we could capture this yeah. moment and so it was a great memory not only for um the kid not only for his family but also um the instructor right and the yeah. fact that they couldn't yeah. stop laughing was was really fun yeah. right it was cool yeah i think golden uh, golden ramsey is uh is a uh, golden nuggets here Next time I'll try Jamie Oliver. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Rock oh my gosh, it's so much fun. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah. Now it is. Now here's what we are um, talking about. Once again, real big um, soft light, and we shot this kid next to, right next to the to the right of him was a white wall. Right. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to create bounce off of that wall um, to give some feel. Now, for men and for boys, I love texture. All right. I love um, I love uh, shadow and things of that nature. So this might have been this might have been a three or four to one ratio um, that we did here. And once again, we involve the depth of field shot. Right. I love that. And so with high school seniors, I love to feature what's important to the high school senior. Right. And so he had on a pretty cool watch. And so yeah, I was checking on the watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a Kenneth Cole watch. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's a Kenneth Cole watch. And so kids love their stuff. Right. They love their iPhones. They love their uh, Beats headphones. They love their gear. They love their shoes. Right. Um, they mm -hmm. love their stuff. And so what we do is we feature their stuff in their high school senior photos. And so one of the cool ways uh, to do that without switching up lighting setups a whole heck of a lot, um, getting variation in the same scene or same scenario, we put his arm right out front, right? Just like this on this side, right? Had the watch and we put the focus point on the watch. Right. And took him slightly out of focus. Just a very cool kind of shot that um, parents and family tend to love. Right. He also played uh, football. Yep. Right. So featuring the football and having him scream once again, depth of field shot. Focus point is on the football. Right. Um, he loved this kid also loved his. Uh, he loved his Timberland boots. I don't know if they like Timberland boots in Australia, Aries. We love, uh, yeah, I have a couple of those. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love these types of shots. They are very simple to shoot, but they add a great deal of contrast, depth, and interest. Once again, he's holding the, uh, the shoe way out close. And as you can see, my hand in the screen, whatever's closest to the lens gets way bigger, mm -hmm. right? Well, that whatever's farthest away shrinks. And so he held the boot right out front and we featured it. Right. Um, and it's his favorite boot. It wasn't brand new, but it was his boot. Yeah. And so um, we see him in the shot in the background. And you can see that the boot is way bigger than his head, but a very yeah. cool shot that features his stuff. And I'm going to tell you all, especially when doing high school senior photos, families tend to buy stuff that is geared towards them, that tells the story of who they are, yeah. right? And what they know about their kid um, or the mm -hmm. kid in their family, all right? And so the next shot is the opposite of that. Same scene, same lighting. Only thing I did was switch the focus point. Focus point went from the boot went to his eyes, right? Brought him into focus, took the boot in the foreground, out of focus, made for another cool kind of shot. They absolutely loved it. Mm. Really cool. Rock that. So um, nice. it's good to, sorry, I have a couple of questions coming. When lighting with some reflectors, what lens are you? Teaser Studio, can you suggest me? Um, the Godox um, 862 Canon support, Canon EOS 200D2. Um, you have any idea, Sean? Because I'm, I'm I just that Godox V. I've never used the VA60. Um, yeah. So I, I could tell you. Canon support. Yeah, Canon sorry, Kuma, wait, wait. 
yeah, we couldn't be much of help. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Sony guy, so <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, we, we never uh, use that lights. We never use that camera, so can't be yeah. much of help. I'm sorry. Mm. How do you choose your aperture to have the correct DOF? How do you choose your aperture to have the correct depth of field? Yeah. Um, yep. Shoot at what I shoot at, right? So typically in portraiture, if if you're holding way out, that's enough depth of field. I don't I don't even typically um, calculate that. So I'm five six or or I'm somewhere around two point eight to five six when I'm doing those types of shots. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a nice one. All yeah. right, next. Jumping. Yes. So um, these we wanted to capture. High school senior girl who uh, has some Air Jordans. So once again, the high school senior loves, they love their stuff, right? Um, and so I we, love that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did you remember I asked you? I have, um, a, I, had a, I have a Rachel one, which is black you know, black reds, but I never get to get to connect, collect one of those, you know, I've been watching those for ages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, I'm not a, so check it out, man. I'm not really a sneaker head, but, um, yeah. I, I, I don't own a pair of Jordans, but I'm getting ready to buy a pair, right? My <laughs> very first pair of Air Jordans ever in life. Um, because you know, when they came out, the ones that I want, the Air Jordan threes, when they came out, I couldn't afford them back then. It's airy. So, yeah. I'm here to get them now. So this was cool, man. You know, like, so, so like kids love their stuff. And so I'm thinking to myself, how do we feature her shoes and feature them in a significant way? And once again, here is the lens flare, right? So here's yeah. the Hopton of the lens flare. Um, and here is the sun setting. And we are by the water. We're by this gate, which, um, which provides a strong uh, leading line. And I decide to shoot low because we also have a beautiful, beautiful sky, right? With some really cool clouds in the background. And so we did some shots with her sticking her foot out and you'll see the, you'll see it in the shots. If you go to the shot, the slide before, you'll yep. see her foot out. And this is where we started, right? With yep. her foot out with the lens flare to the, uh, to the left-hand side. Um, yep. And, and you can actually see, um, the flare and, and all of that stuff in the lens. And I didn't mind that. It was cool for me. Um, and we had her jump a little bit and we had to stick her foot out. But I wanted to find a more significant way um, to feature her. And once again, that was shooting down low. And with her bending her, or um, you go to the next slide, with her bending her knees, right? Um, it made, it actually allowed me to fill up the frame more with her, with the subject matter, with her bending her knees. And it put the Air Jordans right in your face, right? Exactly. Um, so we had her jump a couple of times and I really love the one in the center um, with the uh, lens flare right over the railing, right? Um, all of that stuff helps to lead right to the Air Jordans, uh, which was really, really cool. Good Jordan one, brave. Yeah, so Rob <laughs> told me to get the Jordan ones, <laughs> yeah. right? So, uh, hey, I, I don't know, money. <laughs> so these were really cool. And even if you look at the last shot on the right, her face isn't in it, but it, it, it helps to tell a story, right? And so when I shoot, we, we are shooting several different types of photos within the same scene, but all of the photos together help to tell a story, right? So I like putting them together. I oftentimes put them together in the high school seniors album, right? Um, and parents and families absolutely love it. Yeah. If I have a Jordan one though, I wouldn't put on my shirt. I wouldn't put on my food. I would just hold it to, to, to my bed. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Rock that, right? Um, and here we go. I just wanted to capture her. You know, I wanted to capture the excitement on her face. Um, that was there when she jumped and she's holding out the peace sign. Um, and so she's edge lit. And so, so that was, just, that was a fun shoot. That was a really, really fun shoot. Yeah. So Jimmy, uh, Jim, um, Jim, um, Jim, our mates have a question. So do you use a filter when shooting to the song? So I did use a filter on this one. Once again, she's a, uh, she's a young lady and I wanted some of those uh, shadow lines to be a little softer. 
Um, so yep. yeah, shooting into to the sun. Um, I used uh, a filter. It was the which one was it? I think it was the thirty six. I think this one was a thirty six in the three hundred. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And so, um, football player. You can see the setup. Um, right there in the middle, we use the 400 with the 65, right? Um, again, and what we wanted to do was capture some movement. So we got him on the 20 yard line and we got some portraits like that, but I also had them explode off the line, right? And so on the left hand side, um, that is actually how um, a center he plays center, um, in football, which is the guy who hikes the ball, uh, to the quarterback. And immediately once he hikes the ball, he comes up in center to grab the jersey of the uh, opponent in front of him. So that's how he practices. And that, so that's authentic. That's how we wanted to capture that. So his dad has always been his coach. And so we had dad calling out the hike. Oh, oh, what, 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 and he would he actually hiked the ball. Right. Um, and he went into a uh, stance. And so we did this several times. So if you go to the next one. Um, yeah. If you go to the next slide, you will see the progression uh, yeah. of that, which is really cool. This happened to be an overcast day as well. It uh, wasn't as overcast as the um, as the runner, the, the young lady that was jumping with the yellow suit on. But this is an overcast day as well, which is also cool for dramatic lighting, especially with these types of shots. And so I wanted to capture him actually doing that movement. And what's cool about this, um, I had him do some shots with his hands out because I thought hands out looked better. But what his family appreciated about this and what his dad appreciated about this is that this was authentic movement and that he could show this to people who are in the football world. Right. He had no problem showing these types of photos to people in the football world because he did it the real and the right way. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that is what we captured. Right. Um, a couple of times he almost ran me over. That's how serious he was about it. But, you know, that's what we do is capture the shot. And that was my 24 to 70. Works like a charm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a it's probably off the topic, but um, I don't know. Uh, Frederick's asking, do you push back your clients not want prints but digital earning? If so, do you sell prints release or it's include, included? I, sure. I I I listen, I want to sell, I want to sell prints. I do not I offer digitals if they want them, but I'm but they are super expensive. All mm -hmm. right. Um, because I don't want a client buying digital images, right? So we push to um sell prints and wall art. And so we set life up that way. And so we have them come in for a consult. We have them come in for an ordering session, right? And during the ordering session, um, if they have to absolutely have to have a digital, um, then we charge $150 per digital image if they want it. Uh, I don't want people buying digital, so right. So um, and so that's a that's a part of Fred Frederick, how you set up your business, right? And so yep. what, what I talk to people a lot about is you have to train your client. You either have to train your client or you have to fire your client. And mm -hmm. so if you got clients that are asking you for digitals and they are insistent upon it, then maybe it does not need to be your client. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you being the business, you being the business owner, you 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 sell what you provide. Right. And so if you don't provide digitals, then they won't get digital. Mm -hmm. Right, I think an another energy will be we are not um, we are not you know we call this woody so supermarkets we cannot sell value our time working time is limited we can only intake one maximum two clients I yeah. I, I would assume high school session every single day you just don't you like by sending digital it doesn't makes you you know <laughs> yeah. So focus on the clients, only focus on the clients you want and just leave rest for everybody else. Leave the digital clients for with, with digital photographer. That might uh, might work, right? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. Frederick's also asking a question about the sky replacements. Um, do you do sky replacements or? Um, I very little, right? Um, very little. Now, I don't have a problem with sky replacements, especially if it's really good. I know uh, Luminaire has mm -hmm. um, software out there that is really, really good with, uh, yeah. with sky replacement. And I don't typically have a problem with that. 
Um, but I, I can tell you that I don't have time for that. And so I focus on the subject matter, which is the senior. Mm -hmm. If you notice in a lot of my portraits that are in studio, I'm shooting on either white, gray or black. And you don't mm -hmm. notice that because you notice the energy or the personality of the high school senior um, mm -hmm. themselves. Right. And so uh, I don't I certainly don't have a problem with sky replacement as long as it looks realistic um, mm -hmm. and it works well for the composition of the photo. Yeah. I think uh, for me, because I, I get to ask this kind of question as well, um, lots of depends, right? Because, you know, if your clients feel it's authentic moments, they are living in that moments, they might, you know, whatever the sky is, might just carry a sentimental moment, uh, that sort of value to them. You can swap your sky, but how does it make your clients feel? Are you more on a photographer side? Are you more on the digital sort of artist side? So it depends on your clientele as well, right? Uh, everybody has a choice. There's Numina, there's a Photoshop. I, I think the Photoshop 2021 actually supports sky replacement easily, but mm -hmm. you have to be very careful because go down that road, how that impact your business practice um, would, uh, would also be a consideration, right? Always think about the long run. Yeah, all, when you're talking about, when you're talking about clients, right? Like if you're shooting outside, are you gonna replace all of the skies? Right, that becomes, that becomes a logistics and workflow thing, right? Um, and you'll find that the more the more posts that you do, um, the harder that stuff becomes. And so you want to refine your workflow so that it makes you money. Because for the photographer, time is money. Mm, exactly. How do you feel about? Oh, he said. I think that I think he was. I think that was the same question. Yeah. On yeah. over. That, so, do you use constant lights at all? I have never now I've never I'm a strobe guy, right? Yeah. I think I may have used constant lights maybe once or twice. And I think that constant lights have gotten to the point now where they are really good. But back when I started, constant lights were, were not really that good. They weren't really that powerful. Yeah. And so I just dove all the way in strobes. Yeah. yeah. So I know. Um, yeah. As for um, as for my side, like. I, by looking at Sean's picture, I don't think uh, ML60 would do uh, would would be able to come back the sun. It's more like run and gun for the so, sort of night reception kind of uh, uh, sort of lights. I have received one, but uh, it, you know, once we receive one, we will give you an in depth re uh, review about it. Stay tuned. Very cool, man. Yep. Here's another question for you, Sean. Um, how do you feel about? Uh, gel for color correction, CTOs and CTB. Actually, actually, really cool. So, so I actually have a shoot coming up where I'm going to be using um, CTO gel. So, so there's a there's a session. That I'm oh, this is going to be so sweet, um, Aries. I am going to actually take my uh, color temperature down on purpose, right? I, I'm I'm going to uh, I think I'm gonna go somewhere around 2,000 or so, um, yeah. something like that. And I'm going to use CTO on the subject to separate them from the background. So the whole purpose is to create um, this blue, um, this bluish background with the uh, CTO gel given correct color. So I love absolutely um, using that. Matter of fact, I just bought a modifier um, to use with Godox that 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 sets in the color gels. Rocket. All right, let's go on to the next top, next image. Um, this is a doctor that we did. Um, really cool. I just like I loved um, this scene. Once again, far away. Uh, once again, in shape, right? Um, and if you go to the next photo, you'll see kind of how that turned out. Yeah. Oh, nice. This two hundred, right? Um, and yeah. we had a person hand holding, um, yeah. and so I wanted to highlight her face on the side and have her look and appear very strong. This was actually the the building where she worked. And we I love this little bridge area. And I love the fact that the sun was hitting um, the building off to the left-hand side in the background, right? Uh, and so this was wide angle. I might've been wided out the most that I could here. This might've been 24. Um, and actually I didn't want it straightened, right? So um, I didn't use, tilt shift or anything like that. And to be honest with you, using tilt shift, we still might probably would have had to do some correction. Um, 
in in post in Lightroom, right? So I just thought that that was really cool, um, yeah. and that's what we captured. Yeah, I don't think you know. In lots of contexts, yes, you do want the architecture to be straightened. But in this case, if you look at the shape of the architecture, it mm -hmm. actually mimics uh, the way she stands, right? Mm -hmm. It's you know, geometric-wise or, you know, graphic-wise, it, it brings yeah. this harmony yeah. in, in, in this whole picture. So I think in this scenario, it actually works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Rock that. Absolutely. And then we went right around the corner in full sun, right? Yep. And what I wanted to do was we brought in the light just to add a bit of fill underneath the, uh, underneath the chin. And that's the next, that's the next shot. Yep. Right. So, um, it was really, really black. So we brought, we brought in just a bit of a feel and, and I thought that this was really, really strong. Uh, I love, I loved the direct sun, um, on her face. She has a really strong jawline. Beautiful. Very striking. Yeah. Yep. This, the next one's very, Oh my God, so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. So so here's the deal. This the, the 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 high school senior girl on the left is actually the girl that had the afro. Right? Yep. So she's the one that had the afro in the shots earlier. And so we brought her into the studio to finish her um finish her shoot. So they shot both um on location and they shot in studio and so um this is a great family i've known them for over 10 years i've seen this young girl grow up um and they are great friends and so dad you know dad knew he wanted me to do the photos but he knew that i wasn't cheap <laughs> right and so um he was having some anxiety about paying all of this money for her senior year, all of the stuff that she needed, everything that they were going through and, and stuff that they needed. And so I thought that it would be really fun to capture that experience. And so we we sat them down in scene. We used the 120, yeah. one light, right? Um, and we had them close to we had them close enough to the background. Actually, to be honest with you, the six the 65 may have been on the background um with this, and I didn't put it in here. Yeah. So but but I metered them for it might have been F8 um, is what this was. And I took them through acting lessons. Right. So I said, listen, I need you all to look. I need you to look like you in pain, dad. And I said, mom, I need you to go for the credit card like you're trying to snatch it away from them. And I need the, the high school scene. I need you to do that. And so this is this is what they did. We did a couple of takes of this and it was uh, it was fun. And it turned out amazing. They absolutely loved this photograph. Very simple, though. Very simple setup, right? When you talk about energy um, and engaging the client, and then we did the the next shot, which was the, but it, the whole the whole emotion and uh, you know and the, the the flow, the emotional flow among the family is amazing, right? That's the yeah. golden golden nugget is here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's the love, and then it's the love of the family, right? And so um, it was you know dad coming into the studio and then being a part of this and this being a part of their experience as a family um and her experience as a high school senior she is very astute very smart girl right um yeah. she's gonna be able to do whatever she wants in life and so um it was really cute uh she said dad don't worry about it i'll pay you back when i get rich and she was so serious when she said it that it was funny right it was just it was funny um yeah. And so that's what we did. So he held up the credit card. We made sure we had his finger cover numbers and stuff like that. And we did the depth of field shot again, right? Um, once again, my staple, uh, I think it worked extremely well here, especially when you see the daughter, her hand reaching out and then her other hand trying to hold mom back from getting the credit card, right? Um, it just tells a very- it's cool like mine, story. mine, uh, mine, mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, just oh, a very, cool, it. Yeah. very fun kind of story. Yeah. It's one of my favorite yeah. shots, period. Yeah, but to be serious, Sean, it wouldn't work with my family. You know why? Why? <laughs> my wife's already got my credit card. Yeah, well, 
I have about, you know, 5 dollars 20 cents Pokemoning every single day. You know what I'm saying? That includes petrol. <laughs> so, so the, so the photograph would be of you trying to take the credit card back. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably just go to beg for credit cards. Like, physically, it wouldn't work. Oh, hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, this is fun. Oh, yeah. I love that fun, you know? So, so think about it. Same scene as the, um, as the girl up top. Right, as a girl in the yellow jumpsuit, um, not an overcast day. So, I, so yes, I think we shot high speed sync with this one, um, and we did some very fun, very cool kind of stuff, right, to bring the sky into uh, um, into proper exposure. Right, I didn't want to underexpose the sky. I wanted to kind of keep it bright and airy because she was a cheerleader. Um, I still wanted strong lighting, right? I still wanted strong shadow, but I wanted uh, a brighter background, right? And a brighter sky. I think it, it just, it really told the story a lot better. Um, and this shot. to be honest, she like with her skin tone and with a dark, dark outfit and dark hair, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's nice contrast. It's nice contrast, mm -hmm. right? With a lighter background anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rock that. Oh, nice. Yes. Rock that. Are there any more questions? No. Um, the, the previous comments we got is a laugh out loud. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Rock I'm, that. I'm pretty sure it refers with the Visa card uh, conversation we had earlier. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah the Visa card. Yes. So, um, break dancer. So, um, we had a break dancer here in in a dark um, in a dark parking structure. And so, once again, um, very defined, a lot of tattoos, um, and did a lot of jumps, right? And so, this is a, a class that I I taught, but but I thought this was really really cool. Um, I was getting a lot of spread on the light, so I wanted to stop it down. So we had we were kind of assigned um, uh, a certain softbox, and it was a Godox softbox, and I think this was the this might have been forty seven um, with a grid. Right. And so we gridded it. And this is what this is what we got. This might have been two fiftieth of a second uh, here. OK, cool. So I'm going to uh, let you to share. Let's just maybe share, finish sharing this thing, like two last images before okay. we go for the day. Yeah. OK. Oh, we oh, we are almost done. We're almost time. Yeah. Dude, let's go. Can we go to the last? Can we go to the sure, last of images? Yeah, which which um, one do which page do you want me to go to? Oh man, this is video stuff. Let's go to the jump, right? So let's go yep. to the fifty. Can we do fifty real quick? Yeah, sure. All right. Um, can you guys see the video playing here? They yep. should be able to see the video. But yes, I can see yep, it. Good. Um, yep. Actually, the video ran a little bit long. It was supposed to be cut, but yeah. So we got him. We got them jumping. We used the uh, the 400 with the 85W, right? And um, we were in between two structures, and so I wanted enough. I wanted enough light on him um, to just illuminate the the area. We had some separation from the backlight, and so go down to the uh, to the next one. Yep, 51. Okay, 51. Sorry, yep. I was looking at Robert. That's um, okay. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. And so um, this is what we want to do. We wanted to highlight the suit. This, is a, this guy's a suit designer, but he's very um, charism charismatic. Right. And so we wanted to capture the personality of him. Um, yeah. He was wearing the mask during the, the age of COVID. And this is him jumping. Right. And we this is a one light from uh, left hand side. Um, and we just had enough ambient to capture the background. Uh, I just wanted to illuminate it enough with the concrete and the structures. I like texture with men. Right. And so um, let's go down to the next photo because <clears throat> I know we don't have a whole heck of a lot of time. Um, yep. This was this is him in shadow area, but I liked uh, the background behind him. I love that he had a leather tuxedo. So we wanted to cap. We wanted this to be really, really cool. Right. Um, and there's a video there um, with that. And I think we, we were using the same uh, 400 and the uh, 85 for yep. that. Right. Sure. Uh, you want me to? Is that the video you want me to play, or 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Here's this video is the one that you. Oh, okay. Can, yep. This no no the next oh, one the next one. Oh, the next one. The next one. Yeah. Let's do the next okay. one. Sure. Because I this is this is this is one of my favorite shots, um, ever. Right. Oh yeah, I love that one too. Yeah. So this is once again. I this is the thirty-five. Uh, the sixty-five. I'm sorry. Um, far away. I think we meet her. I think the light, the ambient light was like F15. Um, it was given us. I love the warmth um, of the sun setting behind them um, and right in between the buildings. Right. So the first shots that I captured were right next to his head. And we even got some with the with the with the lens flare right next to his head, which was kind of cool. But this one I absolutely loved, loved, loved. I um, we put the light on this the top half on purpose. I wasn't really crazy about the pants and we really wanted to highlight the leather suit, right? Yep. Um, just a very, very, very cool shot with the shades and the buildings uh, behind them and the texture underneath them hi uh, highlighted really well. Um, and then creating um, a little bit of shadow by, the, by the, the beard underneath the chin. I just thought this was a beautiful, this is one of my favorite shots. Mm. Um, that I absolutely love uh, capturing. Right? Yeah, I love that shot too. Yeah. Right. Um, so we let's call it call it for the day. And uh, thank okay. you, thank you, Sean, for for this wow. great presentation. It like flies. Yeah, it went fast, so man. Fast. Yeah, with lots of questions and introductions. I um, I hope everyone just had a great time and enjoyed this as much as I do. For the guys who's around uh, Detroit, uh, please just go to what's the Rock That Conference, right? You get you yeah, get, uh, yeah. Rock That Conference, RockThatConference.com. You can also go to WeLovePhotographers.com. Okay, um, this is a place you want to go to. You'll see on uh, my last conference, right? We couldn't do it this year, of course, because of COVID, but we are June. 17th through the 19th, 2021. June 17th through the 19th, 2021. We are the Multicultural Association of Professional Photographers, which means we welcome everybody. We are a platform for all nations, for all cultures, um, for all personalities. We want everybody to come through. We want to make it a great one this year. Uh, we're going to be investing in, uh, in, in our younger generation, Generation Z, next year. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. Godox is that deal, you all. Mm. So uh, also, if you guys want to follow John, uh, Sean's personal work, that's uh, his Instagram holder is uh, right uh, under his his gorgeous right, yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, it, here we go. There we go, right exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, there we so, go. Right here. Charlie yeah. Studio. I hope, yeah, I hope everybody had a great evening slash morning or afternoon, and uh, I'll see you guys until next time. Bye. Thank you, Aries. Bye, bye, man. Bye. Bye, everybody.